Hi everyone, it's Anthony here from Anthony's Hobby Corner, and I hope you're all keeping safe. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a, a complete overhaul on the subtle German shunt locomotive. Now, typically I like to run a lot of DCC sound locomotives on my layout, and uh, as you all perhaps can appreciate, those lo those type of uh, locomotives with DCC and sound bring a lot of uh, a lot of um, stimulation and uh, and uh, a different dimension of enjoyment to the hobby. However, I do have a soft spot for vintage locomotives, uh, DC vintage locomotives, and uh, this is one of those locomotives that I uh, uh, secured recently from a local seller, um, and I figured. Uh, let's give it a complete overhaul because it just wouldn't run i put it on the track and it wouldn't budge i did see it was trying to move but it just uh was uh very hesitant to move so i figured let me just give it a complete overhaul first anyways so i do have um quite a few of these uh, vintage locomotives fleischmann and uh, rocco and so on uh, that uh, I like to service them and bring them back to life and then enjoy them on the layout. I get equal enjoyment by running these old little vintage ones, um, uh, even as opposed to running some of those, uh, the new DCC sound locomotives. It's a different realm of enjoyment uh, with these old ones. So what we have here is a small diesel shunt locomotive by a company called Orenstein and Coppel, hence the O and K in the front of the locomotive. Um, this was a uh, um, action engineering company that was founded in 1876, um, and they um, they were into building heavy equipment uh, as well as escalators, as well as rail vehicles as little locos. So, um, of course, the company was acquired eventually um, and the the um, escalator division was was acquired by Krupp as you would recognize them today as Thies and Krupp that builds escalators and elevators and the heavy equipment division uh, was was acquired I believe in 1999 uh, by New Holland which was belonged to the Fiat group at the time and so um, the company was no longer beyond that and um, and what was remaining was the railway division and they got out of the railway division in 1981 so that was the end of the company at that point uh, but uh, they're kind of iconic in in German rail because you'll get many of these ONK locomotives different variations uh, out there now this particular one is a 28 ton um, mini diesel shunt locomotive um, that is actually chain drive to the axles. It's got a 220 horsepower engine in here, a prime mover in here. That's about it. Uh, so very simple locomotive, but um, you know, I really like this little locomotive because uh, uh, my dad used to have one of these uh, about 35 uh, years ago when we had a layout, um, when he had his layout, uh, HO layout. So this one kind of brings back some memories and I figured it's kind of fun to run one of these in my layout. Actually, I've got two more of these as well now. So this is the third. All right. So um, this particular model here is built by Fleischmann. And this is a, uh, it's a Fleischmann uh, 1306. Uh, but this model of locomotive is called an a ONK MV9. So what I'm going to do right now is basically pull this one apart because I put it on the layout and it just wouldn't run. It tried to move a little bit, which tells me that the motor is functioning, but uh, it's just either gunked up or jammed in there, but I don't want to destroy it. So I figured I'll just shut it down and then take it all apart and give it a full cleanup uh, service and then we'll put it back together again. Now, um, one thing I forgot to mention before was is the vintage of these locomotives or the circuit of these. Now, this particular model, they built them in three different uh, sessions of uh, runs. Um, the first run was between 1959 and 1966 by Fleischmann. Uh, and I believe this one is from that era uh, because of the way it's been mounted onto the frame. The differentiation is that the first era, uh, they, were, they were mounted by the, the end brackets here. 
and the second era was 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 held together to the shell with some clips uh, and of course the third one was was a green locomotive with the yellow stripe on it and you'll see the picture on your screen in a second um, so in any case this I believe is the first era and so it's quite exciting to take one of the older locomotives and uh, and clean them up so here we go all right so first just need to remove the uh, the screws at the end the buffers at the end here Okay, the shell just pops out. And there are the weights. It's going to put the weights back in the shell. So I know the orientation. I'm going to clean the shell as well before I put it all together. So I'm going to put the shell aside. See, here it is. Oh, I can tell somebody is tempered with this locomotive because look, I can see the. Uh, the faceplate is completely loose and the screws are all have not been screwed back in so somebody has been mucking around with this local um, so I'm glad I didn't run it for too long okay so first things I'm gonna clean the motor up all right first I'm gonna carefully remove the brushes It is, and I'm going to put it in uh, a little bit of contact cleaner just to get the gunk out. Let it soak there for a second. It's a second brush. I'm going to Stir that around. There's well, already gunk coming out of this brushes. Alright, now that the brush is out, I can uh, remove the face plate. Wow. I gotta be careful there is a th thrush washer in here oh my goodness look at that look at that commutator it's absolutely completely gunked up that's horrible well I'm gonna have to give this a thorough cleaning here I'm just gonna move the faceplate aside and grab the uh, The motor. And this is going to require a thorough cleaning. I have to make sure I don't lose the thrust washer that's in here. Oh, that's completely caked on as well. All right, so let's get cleaning on this one. I'm going to put some contact cleaner and clean around here. Wow, it's a lot of gunk.
All right, so now it's time to clean this commutator. It's in really bad shape. Wow. Let's put some contact cleaner on here and first get the gunk out. And then I may have to even polish, uh, use some brass and polish out the, the commutator as well. Look at stuff so can. All right, so for this one, I think I'm gonna have to put a little bit of uh, a little bit of brass on here just to polish up the uh, and take that the the black gunk that's embedded into the commutator. And you can see this thing get completely cleaned up now. This stuff does wonders in cleaning up uh, all the gunk that gets embedded into these commutators in the most mild and non-abrasive fashion. I don't like using sandpapers and stuff on commutators because they need to be absolutely smooth uh, to have minimal abrasion with your brush. So that's why I like to use something like Brasso just to polish out and take the gunk out. There you go, we went from a completely gunked up commutator to something that looks nicely polished and there's no there's no gunk on it right anymore. Just gonna clean it up now with some contact cleaner and we'll be good to go. And this is the most crucial part of Fleischmann or Ringfield motors, is getting this piece done properly. Once you've done this, basically the rest of it is, uh, you know, um, icing on the cake. There you go. It's a vast difference from how it was before. All right, so now one more step is to use a, a little dental pick here and clean between the uh, sections of the commutator to get any kind of uh, brush residue that's, that's stuck in there. All right. All right, it's nice and clean now. So now uh, I'm just gonna put some contact cleaner in here. Just clean the insides here as well. All right, so that's done. All right, next we're gonna clean the back of the plate here. That's all uh, all gone tough there. Oh, it's all of dirt. And now I'm gonna use one of these finer, finer cotton Q-tips to go and clean the the brush uh, brush holes these ones here and the uh, bearing bearing here as well so we'll do the bearing 
Okay, so the gunk in there. That one came out. So I'm gonna clean the other one. Wow, it's a lot of gunk. All right. That's all the gunk from the uh, the brush brush holders and the uh, bearing. All right, faceplate is clean. I'm just going to clean the chassis here a bit quickly. All right, now I'm going to clean up the gear wheel, so I'm going to pop this open here. Now the gear wheels seem to be well lubricated, but um, honestly, I don't know what kind of lubricants they've actually used in here. So I'd rather actually pop them out, clean them out, and then put in some flesh lubricant in here. So here we go. All right, so now we can take these gears out. Even though they're all the same size, I'm going to place them in order. These clips sometimes tend to fly out of the down place, so where is that gear wheel with the clip? There we go. So you got all the gear wheels out. I'm going to now clean up the, the chassis, remove the existing oil that's in here. Now's the time to get out any kind of uh, gunk that are on these uh, 
wooden spindles here. Okay. Fairly clean. All right, so now I need to clean up these gear wheels. I'm going to clean this gear wheels in, on, in IPA because it's least impactive than uh, contact cleaner for that, so. There you go. Oh, I've got a gunk on here too. All right. So the gears are fairly clean. Now we can put the gears back in. see the wear here on this lift plate so I'm gonna put some lubrication there I'll make sure I put some lubricant there when I put it back Make sure you hand tighten it first so that, that make sure you got it on the right threads. Yep, it's good to go. Now what I'd like to do is put a little bit of tre tre tread lock in there, so just one second, we get one of that. So we got some uh, thread lock here. So I'll put a little dab on this. There we go. So that'll dry up. And that'll make sure that that nut does not come loose. All right. So while that's drying, put the rest of the gears back on. Actually, I might as well lubricate this one. No. So I have a few lubricants that I use. I mean, I typically use the 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 hobby lube, um, 
by uh, Woodland Scenics. Uh, by no means am I endorsing any of his products. I'm just sharing with you what I use. Uh, it's a light oil. But then I also started using this one, uh, Liquid Bearings. Uh, it's a 100% uh, synthetic lubricant that I use for my mechanical uh, clocks. And uh, apparently it's supposed to be very good for that. So I'm going to be experimenting with this now on, on my locomotives as well. That's good. Some on this one. Okay, very good there. Now put the rest of the gears in. There we go. Put some lubrication for these two. Again, you just don't need much, you just need us a little bit. Okay, and I have finally the main gear here. Okay, so this one's ready to go. It's gonna put a little bit of Lubricant on the spindle there. And put the uh, clip back on. So now we have fresh lubricant and everything's been cleaned up in the section. All right, um, let's put the motor back on and then clean the wheels and uh, and the contact. So before I assemble the motor and put it back on, I'm actually going to use this opportunity to clean the wheels properly uh, and then clean the contact points uh, and the contact strip and put it back on. Let's get the wheels cleaned up now. So I'm going to be using a little bit of Brasso again because these wheels seem to be having glazed with dirt for a long, long time. Again, it's a vintage locomotive, so you know, it's pretty much expected. I'm going to clean the uh, wheels now with some IPA just to give it a little bit of a take all that residue from the brass or out. I'm going to put some contact clean on the back of these wheels because these, the one that doesn't have the gear wheel on it, because these ones actually have the wipers go against them for uh, electric, electrical contact.
Let's give it a whack. All right, so we got the wheels cleaned. Now we can clean the contacts and put them back on as well. Clean these contacts too. All right, so we've uh, lubricated the gears, cleaned them up, we've cleaned the wheels, we've cleaned the, the axles, we've cleaned the contacts, and we've cleaned the, uh, the face plate of the motor as well. So now let's put the motor back in place, and then we can put the, uh, the other pieces back in. So here goes the motor. So it fits like that. So it can only go in one way, which I like. Okay. Okay, now time to put the screws back on. And I'm still a little baffled as to why this motor was opened up partially. Um, In any case, we'll find out soon. Okay. Okay, so we've got the motor in place. I'm gonna save putting the brushes for the last, last step. So now I'm just gonna line up the contact. It goes on the inside here. Okay, this has to go inside of that first. Go and then line up the uh, hole here. Gears in place. There we go. A little screw. There we go. So wheel contacts in place in place all right now all we have to do left is just put in the uh, 
brushes and we're good to go. So if you notice the brushes we've been soaking in this little contact cleaner for a little while. Just gonna take them out. Wipe them down. There we go. I think uh, it's ready to roll. Just need a little bit. Get one more, one more piece here, and that is the uh, motor bearings. So for this side of the motor bearing, I'm going to use the synthetic oil because there's no brushes on this side. On this side, we use the product called Conductor Lube. Um, on here as well. To the uh, axle bearings here, because there is um, there is uh, con contact points on the axles. Okay, I think we're done. All right, so now we're gonna put the case back on. But before I do that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually uh, I'm going to clean it up a bit because it's kind of gunky. Let me just clean up the case first and uh, we'll put it back on. Okay, so I just cleaned up the shell with some soap and water. Um, and uh, now we can put the shell back on. Just gonna put the weights back the way they were. Slide this back in here. So I need to put some couplers on here as well. So let me just grab the couplers. All right. So I was able to look at a couple of couplers. I got a traditional Fleischmann hook, as well as the uh, Roku style or the hook and loop type as well. Um, all right. So let's put this one on here and one side. And so I like to have two different types of couplers on each side. That way I could. Uh, I could um, pull different types of concerts with them.
Okay. All right, so Vico, it's all fully assembled again, and uh, I think ready for uh, for a test run on the track. All right, guys, let me just bring this over to the layout here. Um, you have to excuse the layout here a bit. It's a little bit of a mess. I've been uh, doing some scenery work here on the layout. Um, and so I've got some tools and stuff here. So I guess the only circuit I have available here is the inner circuit. So I might just put on the inner circuit here. Um, all right, and let's let's see how this thing runs. It wouldn't run before, so let's see how it goes now. There we go. Nice little shunter. Well, there we go. It's running pretty well. I mean, for a locomotive that was, uh, for a Fleischmann locomotive that was built in uh, 1966, you know, not too bad. I guess they built them pretty well at that time. They, you know, a little bit of cleaning and they come right back into life. All right, well, Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any thoughts, ideas, put them in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to uh, respond. Thank you.